Next up is John. John Luke Hutchkins is the founder of Creative and Creative Director of Another Artist. So John, it's your time to shine. And remember your microphone. Hey guys, how are we doing? Um, Jake, I kind of wish I knew a lot of that stuff when I was growing up in the ranks. That's great stuff, cheers mate. Um, so I'm John Luke Hutchkins. I'm here to just show you guys some how where I started and what I'm doing now. Firstly, huge thanks to oh, uh, Nicholas and Chaos for having me here today. I think I can show you some stuff and it's kind of helpful, fingers crossed. Um, so firstly, I'll start off uh, in the beginning. Um, I was kind of known as art boy at school because like back in the day, I was a, a ute and I used to just love hand drawing and sketching. And I could just like see something and just like replicate it. I don't know why it was this weird kind of talent I had that my parents obviously loved um, and they probably exploited a little bit. But um, I didn't find like a, my true passion in terms of like originality with these hand drawings. So as I got a bit older, I went to fine art school and I started expressing my um, ideas and stuff and using different medias, uh, practicing with many different types of paint, gouache, acrylics, um, found expressionistic abstract and I was like, great, this is this is what I, I love doing and I'm, I'm happy and I can actually create kind of my artwork that I love and that makes me happy. And I was like, well, what do I do with this? Where, you know, what can I turn this into? Don't really want to be an art teacher. So I thought architects push the boundary of art. So I thought I moved to Oxford and study architecture at architecture school there. And um, I kind of found myself doing similar sort of work from my fine art days, you know, kind of using color and balance and, you know, all these kind of interesting things I learned in art school and putting them straight into my architectural ideas and designs. And, you know, this, this for me was like really cool. So I was learning this kind of software, self, self taught, obviously at school, they taught us to do hand, hand drawings, which um i didn't really i couldn't really explain myself very well um so i kind of relied on cgi to to do that so i thought i'd learn as much as i could as quick as possible to to not have to do too many presenta presentations and you know show off my work verbally i just kind of put it on the screen and said look this is my ideas what do you reckon and came up with some pretty interesting ideas so after school I was like, well, what, what shall I do with this? I love art, architecture, design, creativity, products, manager. So I started creating, creating these kind of explorations of like ideas and spaces. And um, <laughs> these, are, these are years old, so these are trash. And I accept that. But I'm kind of happy to show them off. Um, uh, I'm hoping this is not my best work. But, um, you know, back in the day, I was kind of coming up with these ideas of like furniture pieces where I see something, I want to copy it kind of like creating these little installation sort of product visualization spaces and I was like, oh, there's something within this, something interesting about this, you know, and using my architectural understanding of composition, lighting and texturing in a very basic way. So I was like, great, let's, let's kind of push on this and, and see where this takes me and end up getting me through my university days. I met quite a lot of mates and stuff and I was quite lucky because at, at school, it was all about kind of drinking and socializing and I didn't know where any of my mates would go at the time because we were all, you know, uh, morons, I guess, at that school just partying. But a lot of them ended up doing some really great things and kind of put me up with uh, job applications and freelance. And I ended up going from doing this kind of fine art to like product visualization into actually doing like these kind of more high end product spaces and interior spaces. Um, and these kind of pushed to bigger interior sort of spaces and architectural projects. Um, so then I was quite lucky could, where these sort of projects kind of got the attention of um, people like Hayes Davidson and uh, Squint Opera, where I was lucky to get like kind of moved around the globe working in like Melbourne and New York and stuff and um, doing any sort of imaginable architectural project, you know, under the sun. Um, and I, I loved it. I was super happy, but I kind of was so far away yet from this point from doing the, the artwork that I that, from as a, as a young, uh, as a kid. So I thought, well, how can I still do my artwork and my architecture stuff and my creativity? And, you know, how can I blend it all together? What's, you know, where does this all go? So I kind of started doing on the side all this kind of weird, interesting, terrible work like this. 
which I found out later on to be like NFTs, but I was doing these sort of 10 plus years ago just to try and experiment and practice and look at different ways of doing things, looking at lighting, animating, and, you know, they're all very, very embarrassing, but I love them. Like I wouldn't change it for the world because these have helped me kind of learn exactly where I wanted to go or how I could use my, you know, previous education and go somewhere with it. And, you know, for that, I'm super thankful for, for putting myself in a position where I was constantly learning, you know, beyond after working hours or at school, I was just trying to like experiment with software. Um, so this is all done in, I think, mental ray or V-ray. Um, so this, yeah, I think all these projects are mental ray or V-ray. I can't say any, no, yeah, that's correct. Um, so then from this, I thought I'd start another artist and we're a visual art studio focuses on architecture animation and the effects and environments and uh, digital artwork. Uh, we worked all around the world and I thought, okay, I want to be very diverse and like a broad range of projects. So from my architectural days, I started getting jobs like this, which is this really cool photographers in France. And they said, look, we've got this space. We want to put a Jeep in it. I was like, cool. Okay, where do you want the Jeep? Oh, I want it, you know, off, off the picture. To the left, I was like, well, you know, then we have to start turning this into a 3D space. So this is where it all kind of started for me to get actually start getting like clients on board from all came from architecture. So then I'd have to turn this, you know, photograph into a 3D space and then put my Jeep in. You couldn't just photo montage and camera track and match camera match the camera, um, the, the space and put the, the car in. It just didn't wouldn't work because they wanted to see more of the left hand side. So it was actually easier just to 3D model the space. Um, this, this is great when a client knows exactly where they want their product, but sometimes the client has no idea where they want their product. They say, look, we've got some really cool furniture. Can you just invent somewhere? And I'm like, yeah, sure. It's, it's 3D. That's, that's what we do. So it's, it's quite nice being able to do both. And then sometimes people are like, oh, can you do exteriors? Like, we've got a similar sort of idea. We've got, you know, blurring the lines between art and architecture. We've got this kind of sculptural place. Um, this is at LA Ram Stadium um, in Los Angeles, and it's like it's an outdoor kind of structure that we want to showcase. And it's like, yeah, great, we, we can do that because it's again 3D, we can do what we want. Um, so this started to attract more artists, which is exactly kind of what I wanted to do. It was like pushing from all my architecture sort of understanding and career, I'm pushing more towards you know getting the attention of artwork and fabricators and structural engineers and trying to create these massive um, you know kind of uh, pieces. And being involved with that so i had this other artist um in new york who said look i've got this kind of moon idea it's beautiful moon it's all perforated and it's it's like the shape of a moon you can touch it it's rough um and we want to sit on like a hill somewhere i said oh, that sounds great hopefully i can i can help out with this um but then he said actually what we need to do to really sell it is we found a location for it so we need to put it in location um, I was like, oh, cool, that sounds good. Where's the location? Oh, it's off the west coast of America, but it's not built yet. So, no, so at the moment, all it was was water. So they asked me to create an environment, like landscape for it. So I ended up creating this mini city to, to home this, uh, this, this sculpture for them. And I ended up doing like 12 images of this made up city. And it's, it's just being able to be flexible with the type of work you do and trying not to turn down work in terms of like, oh, I've never really just made up a city before and then throwing yourself right into the deep end and just going ahead and doing it. So then once you know you can do kind of the photorealistic city stuff, you can try and push the boundaries a little bit and be like, oh, maybe I can make a more, it looks photorealistic, but maybe it doesn't exist anywhere. So then you're, you're kind of coming up with worlds and inventing things and then the purpose is to showcase the product because the client's interested in marketing the product if it's architecture or furniture or whatever it might be we just I, I tried to put myself in a position where i was available to come up with this sort of uh you know work um and then i was, I was looking at this image and I was, I was really happy with it but then i thought well does the image itself become a piece of artwork i got reached out by another artist who had this idea and they wanted me to put their beautiful purple sculpture in this kind of architectural environment and then I, I was looking at this, these compositions of lighting, the texture, and I was like, well, actually, these are kind of, it's like inception, it's like artwork within artwork. Like we're showcasing the, the design of the, the client, but also the, the work itself could potentially be like some sort of print that you might put on your, your wall sort of thing. Um, so it's like, you know, playing around with all these different possibilities. Um, but then because of this sort of sculpture, 
I got asked to actually start 3D printing sculptures and I, I'd have to be physically given an idea. For example, this artist asked me to put a bag over some people's heads who are trying to kiss and then like, as if you're pulling it away. I was like, yeah, sure, I can come up with that. And they were like, you want a file though that we can send to the printers and get printed in bronze. I was like, okay, that's, you know, it's new, let's do it. Um, and then to top it off, they said, oh, we need leopard print all over it. So I was like, well, actually, that's quite difficult because in, in 3D, you can just do things as textures and unwrap them and it's easy because it's just visual. But this had to be literally an indent, like a, a you know, kind of Z brush pattern that you needed to paint out of this sculpture. So when it hit print, it comes out exactly like the render. So by not limiting myself, I then got the attention of like, these kind of basketball players wanted the same thing and now they're printing their arms and you know basketballs and stuff and their heads in chrome um which is mad uh, but this all game from architecture um, and then the way i lit them and the environments of the scenes like it's it's all aided towards the kind of end goal of working with these artists but then it goes back to architecture with working with people like apple uh the, the headquarters in san fran they they work for myself and an artist who come up with this kind of sculpture for their welcome center. So, um, you know, the, the artist came up with this idea of playing with scale and texture and color using old school Apple products and, you know, just arranging them in different sort of relationships. And then I was there to help aid, aid the process of, you know, selling this to Apple and saying, look, this is what you want. Um, it's quite funny. Originally, this project had, it was, I don't know if you guys have been to the Apple headquarters before, but this area in front of the um, center is, is covered in olive trees and they expected me to paint out about six of them and place this in the in the position and then and then you know call it a day and i was like i'm gonna have to do this all in 3d in order to to achieve that because i'm not cutting around loads of branches so in the end they didn't understand why i had to do it on 3d and then until i showed them a 3d environment whacked a camera around all over the place and just hit render to show you the actual potential of every single possible angle and lighting and, and they loved it and they kind of Blew their minds a little bit. The um, so so it's like such a handy handy tool to have. And then this kind of gets the attention of other other things. I'm really hoping this is not the best image in the deck because this is not quite done by me. It's done by some architects in Amsterdam. But basically, this was working with Jeff Bezos, um, where he and the artist asked me to showcase a sculptural product for them that's going to be hanging. In, um, in the new headquarters, the Amazon headquarters in DC. So this is an in insane, crazy, fun project. Um, it gets really arty, which I love, but um, I feel like I need to be like, uh, okay, I'll try and explain this. So the idea is between the moon and the tide, where that relationship where, you know, the, that kind of the moon pushes the tide and it's, you know, super dramatic. They wanted to do the same thing because he's a billionaire wanted to do the same thing but with maybe a satellite so we thought we'd send a satellite into space um and that kind of orbits the world uh bear with me so there's it, it goes it orbits around the world and that did that kind of depicts on how the art piece kind of rotates so as the satellites go around the world um this you know kind of orbits and then at night time it projects some of jeff bezos favorite paintings on it because of the shape of it they get very well distorted so i think then jeff said it'd be great is have, as the solar system goes around the world it goes to certain coordinates and then it plays back into the headquarters music from amazon music here say jay-z you know the satellite is over you know new york and it's just this insane kind of project um but then you know yeah, it's kind of blowing the lines of ancient art and architecture. It's the perfect sort of place I want to be working in. And then it kind of changes a little bit where you think, oh, what else can you do with, with these kind of architectural projects? And this was working with the National Gallery of Art and Google on this, um, with this dancer who would be eventually controlled by like a person's kind of fingertip movements. Um, so that kind of tells her how to move her body. So firstly, we had to rig this character and make and model her, and then we had to model the space um, for her on the on the artist's sort of painting. Um, and it's it's like how she moves throughout the space and what sort of space that looks like and the colors used. So then the final product is is this. Um, it goes on for longer, but this is just a snippet. Um, and I just realized this is a really weird clip to, to use, but 
anyway, it's it's it, that's what it is. Um, so it's luckily by doing all that research back at school and, and doing all those sort of explorations, I've now put myself in a position doing the exact type of work I wanted to do. So this is kind of one of the most recent projects we're doing. It's just the VFX breakdown um, showing from the, the project we're doing. They've got these characters and we've created these 3D scenes for these characters. And then we've rendered them and textured them, lit them. And then um, we've got the characters and we've got the green screen them and filmed them and then cut them, rotated them all out and then comped the backgrounds in and done some final post-production on them. And, you know, all this comes from architecture, which is insane. But we're super fortunate that we worked so hard, well, I worked so hard to try and, you know, use my architectural experience and then do all this other stuff, which I find fascinating and super, super cool and fun. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just finish off with my show reel and then I think we're done. done. So um, if you guys have any questions or you want to ask me how I did things or anything like that, or just, I don't know, want to chat, I don't, whatever, check me out, um, Instagram, another artist, and, or another artist.co, my website, or just send me an email, hello at another artist.co. Um, yeah, thanks so much. <laughs>